Thanks, guys. You can head back to your families or sit down the front, whatever you like to do. So good. Great to have our youth in with us again. Once again, happy Father's Day. And I just love that. I love that even, you know, seeing people, you get a bonus chocolate even for not being a dad today. I just think that that is awesome. There's not too many places you get that. So just enjoy that, won't you guys? Well, it is, it is a great time and a lot of fun in our service today. And uh, we're starting a new series today called Relationship Goals. Relationship Goals. And you can see what it's all about there on the screen, is that over the next four weeks, we're going to be unpacking, I guess, in a nutshell, how to have, how to have, I mean, we've all got relationships, but how can we actually have great relationships? And we all want that, don't we? We all want great relationships on, in all the different spheres of relationships we've got, but I guess gathering here in a church setting, we want to have relationships like Jesus. We want to relate to people. We want to have good, healthy relationships like Jesus. So that's what this series is all about. So if you, like me, and you see a relationship goals, you just think about romantic, you know, couples holding hands. Um, it's not just going to be about that. It's going to be about every sphere of relationships that we have, whether it be in the workplace, whether it be in your study institution, whether it be home, friendships, whatever. We're going we're gonna to cover all. Is that okay? Great. Relationship goals. Well, first I want to just share a, a photo with um, me surfing with Ari. Have we got that photo? There I am there. Has, hashtag relationship goals. Dad goals. You say what you like. And so you can see, I mean, Instagram, Facebook, we, we hash, you, you see hashtag relationship goals. If you just search that, you'll, you'll come up with all these different photos. We've got some more photos of some relationship goals. There we go. Relationship goals. Absolute goals. Tanya, we will be, I'll be wearing, we'll be wearing gloves like that one day. Friendship goals. Look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? What else have we got? More dad goals. Matching, matching outfits. And family goals. Leave that one up for a sec. Leave that one up. I just love that. So maybe if you're getting a family photo today when you have your Father's Day lunch or whatever you're doing, see if you can recreate the magic. A bit of, um, bit of family goals. Oh, my word. So we, we all want close relationships, but perhaps not that close. Perhaps that's just a little too close. So we won't be quite um, going to that. We can just take that off the screen. Well, so that's where we're going. So today, my message is called Worth Fighting For. Understanding that relationships are worth, we have people in our lives who are worth fighting for. And, and so we're going to be looking at that concept and how we're going to be talking about how relationships are like plants. You can see I've got a plant here. You can see that relationships are like plants, that they need, um, we've got some points there um, and the dot points on the next screen. We'll come back to that photo. But you think about plants and what they need, that they need care and attention. They need, in one sense, they need to be fought for. That in a lot of cases, if you plant something or if you've got something delicate, it's not just going to take care of itself. It actually needs to be fought for. It needs watering. It needs to be put in the right position. It needs TLC, doesn't it? You'll know that if you've got, been a gardener and done anything like that. So Ari and I, and we'll have the sunflower back up. So um, again, you know, dad goals. Um, been, we, we've just planted some sunflower seeds and, uh, and seeing those just shoot up. So we've been, I try and do a bit of gardening with the kids at home. Anyone else do a bit of gardening, whether it be with the kids or just you like that? It's okay. It's not embarrassing. It's a good thing. You know, I think generally accepted, that's a positive thing to do. And so, and, uh, and so we've been doing gardening. We've been, that's not it there. We haven't reached that point, but we've been, we've been sowing the seed. And uh, it, the, the photo, it wouldn't have looked very impressive on the screen to have these kind of little shoots in this manky little pot that's sitting by the window. So I thought this demonstrates it better. And so anyway, we've been, we've been gardening. And so we know about the whole pr process of what's needed to grow a healthy plant. And, uh, and relationships are like that, aren't they? That, and I've found this, uh, I've, at the moment I have successfully maintained uh, and kept alive a few trees and a few plants, which I would have never said a couple of years ago. Everything that I planted died. So it's like my, my dad, who's a real green thumb, 
always brings me plants and helps me try and develop this in my life. And so he, he puts these plants in my hand. He said, Sam, these are the unkillable plants. And I was like, Dad, you do not know me. And I, I proved to him that those plants were killable. And, and I killed them. Not through, not trying to, but it's just what happened. I just, I just didn't give it the TLC that was required. And so that's the thing that we find out, isn't it? That, that if we don't give our relationships TLC, that they, they suffer. In, in the same way that a plant will suffer, if you just leave it, then it won't develop and it won't become healthy and it won't grow to be all that it can and should be, was created for. And, and so a joke, I remember hearing this joke about how this relates to relationships. It must have been at a, at a wedding or something like that. It was a marriage joke. And the wife says this to the husband, how come you never say that you love me anymore? Ooh. Husband says this, I told you once, and if anything changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> and, you know, just relationship, it's not how they work. You can't, I mean, as nice as it would be sometimes that you can sort of set and forget you can just do one decision or one nice thing ever and that sort of sets up a relationship forever and it just flows on, you know. But relationships are not, you can't put them on autopilot. You can't put them on cruise control. They don't function like this. They need, like a plant, they need to be developed. They need to be cultivated, curated. They need attention. They can't be ignored or neglected. And, and this relates to all aspects of relationships. And you think about this, you know, the first question today, and, and you can sort of transplant this into any relationship that you've got in your life, is the question is, are you, are you a cultivator or are, are you cultivating your relationships or are you neglecting your relationships? Are you cultivating? Are you giving the TLC? Are you intentionally putting time, effort, care, kindness into your relationships or are you neglecting it? Are you just hoping that, you can sort of do one thing, you put it in the ground, it'll just grow naturally and it'll just be okay. Come back in 12 months' time and it's still going to be there. When, are, you, are you cultivating or are you neglecting? I love this. We're celebrating Father's Day today, uh, Pastor Ian. And I just love this quote, you know, any guy can make a baby, but it takes a special man to be a father. So you can have relationships, but to actually build strong relationships, to actually, it, it requires intentionality. It requires uh, more than just showing up. Because I can show up with the best of them. You know, I can show up, I can be there, but it's not just being present. It's actually, we need to be intentional in our relationships. We need to work at it. We need to fight for our relationships because people in our lives are valuable worth fighting for? Will you fight for relationships in your life? What's the opposite of fighting? So if we look at that, okay, yeah, I, I agree with you, Sam, I want to fight for my relationships. What's the, what's the opposite? The opposite of fighting for our relationships is giving up, not doing anything, being passive, just letting things flow and hoping things will naturally change. That's the opposite of fighting for relationships. Just hoping those things. And again, I, that's what I hoped when I was in my gardening career. I tried that approach and I hoped that it would work and it did not. And it's the same, the same is true for relationships. And that is not, when we talk about relationship goals, when we talk about living, loving and relating like Jesus, the neglecting or the ignoring approach is not the approach of Jesus. It's the intentional, self-giving, fighting for approach that Jesus wants to encourage us in and that he's obviously modelled and demonstrated for us. And he says this is what we should do in the famous passage in 1 Corinthians 13 on love. It says this, Love does not give up. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love does not put itself up as being important. Love has no pride. And it continues to say this, love takes everything that comes without giving up. Love believes all things. Love hopes for all things. Love's, love keeps on in on all things. 
It's this picture of intentionality. It's this picture of fighting for. It's this picture of even when it's hard, even when it's wilting, even when it's difficult, that what love does is that it hangs on. It does not give up. It continues to give of itself, to know that that relationship's worth fighting for. Love continues to water. Love continues to take care of the other. I wonder, are we cultivating or are we neglecting our relationships in our life today? Love is more than a feeling. Everyone's like, yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. But it's like, our cult, what our culture says, our culture does not believe this. This is actually a radical concept, that love is not a feeling. And love is not about what we can get, it's what we can give. So I'll answer this question. What is the opposite of love? What is the opposite of love? I tricked you, it's not. You'll never answer another question in church again, will you? The opposite of love is not hate, because that's just, it's a, we're talking about emotions. The opposite of love is self. The opposite of love is ego. The, the opposite of love is me and what I can get. But what love is, by definition, it's, it's self-giving. It's other-centered. And so this is what 1 Corinthians is saying is what love is. Love is the opposite of love is not hate but it's self. I wonder, are you, are you worried about, okay, what about me and my plant? What about how I'm going? What about my needs? What about the things that I want, what that, that person's not giving to me? What about that friend? You know, that friend hasn't called me for so long. They should, you know, I've been, I've been teeing up catch-ups for ages. Now it's, I'm just going to let them do it. Is it love? No, it's not. It's self. But love continues to focus on the other and to water and develop and cultivate those around them. Self-giving love. Love must be practically demonstrated. By definition, love has to be practically demonstrated. And we see that Christ has been the ultimate example of this in laying his life down for us. And then he says in 1 John 3, to go and do likewise. Go and do the same. The same way that I laid my life down for you and the church and everybody, you ought to go and have relationships with people like that. That's the way you're going to do it. That's the way I want relationships to be. You know, in relationships, it's really easy to say, I love you, isn't it? It's easy. I tell my wife and my kids that all the time, I love you. I'm a words of affirmation guy. Anyone else a words of affirmation person? You won't get this one wrong. This is just put your hands up thing. <laughs> and I love it. And I love to just express love with words and, and kind words and things like that. But, but here's the thing. Words are very easy. Words are very easy. I can, it's easy to say. I just think it and say it. I'm like, but again, it's like relationships need to be more, based on more than that. Because words are easy to say, but it's not what you say that's important. It's not what you intend to do that's important. It's not that what you hoped you would do that's important. What is important is what you actually do. So words are very cheap in that respect. It's, it's not even your intention. You think, you know, um, what's, the, what's the phrase about having, having good intentions? You know, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> if only that were true. <laughs> that is so false. <laughs> it's like my wife had said, Sam, you know, I really had this great present that I was going to give you for Father's Day. And um, I had all these great thoughts. I'm like, oh, thank you, love. That's awesome. <laughs> no way. I'm like, give me the actual present. <laughs> Follow through. You know, it's not, it's not our words that are important, or they are, but on a, on a certain level. But it's actually what we, what we actually do, what we demonstrate. What we demonst- the love that we demonstrate is the important thing. And in Romans... 5.8, it says this, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. He, he didn't just talk about it, he didn't just feel it, but he demonstrated his own love for us by dying for us. And that's the way we need to relate in our relationships as well. 
I wonder, who are the people that you're kind to in words but not in actions? How can you move and be more intentional, that actions speak louder than words? I want to talk about dead things coming alive again. Is that okay? I'm just going to finish with this today. Dead things coming alive. Because I believe that today, just to impart for a little bit, that, that we have relation, we have some good relationships, I hope, but we also have some relationships that need some work. Perhaps even some relationships that are in the really difficult and, you know, when you think about it, it brings you some stress, anxiety or negativity. We've all got some relationships like that perhaps. But I want to encourage you today that when God comes into your life, when Jesus comes into a relationship, that can make all the difference. And so I'm not just... We have practical things we want to give you, some tools to put in your hand over this series. But at the end of the day, it's Jesus that makes the difference. Because if you take Jesus out of my life, Tanya and I were talking about this the other day, and we said, man, my life would look so different. I would be a dog of a husband. If take, take seriously, the kind of person that I would be, I would be so much more focused on self if it was not for Christ in my life, for what He's done for me. We need Jesus to be the difference in our relationships. Pure and simple. I want to share an awesome story with you to encourage you in your relationships because God is in the business of bringing dead things or things that are struggling, things that seem impossible to bring those to life again. In Mark 5, 35, it's a story where, where the, um, Jesus is going through the crowd, the lady touches him. His, the hem of his garment, she gets healed just by the glory. And, and then he, Jesus is on the way to actually um, heal this Jairus' daughter who's sick and on the verge of death. And so before he even got there, this is what happens. That they, came, they come to Jesus and the disciples and they said, this girl has died. Don't bother this teacher any, any longer. So Jesus, paying no attention to what he said, he told them, don't be afraid, only believe. And so they kept moving and they arrived at Jairus' house. And when Jesus saw the confusion and heard all the crying and the, and the wailing and obviously the grieving that was taking place from the, the girl who, who had passed away, he went in and he said, why all this confusion? Why are you crying? And I love this. I want to focus in on this for a second because we need to believe that this is, this is the God who we serve. This is the Jesus because, you know, he comes in and into a room where everyone's, they're seeing in the natural eyes what, something that is dead. They're seeing something that ha is an impossible situation. But I want to tell you that when Jesus is there, when Jesus is present, it does not matter what is happening with the human eyes. It does not matter what, what it seems to be the case, that when Jesus is in the room, something can happen. And he says this, the child is not dead, she is only sleeping. I wonder what relationship that you've got that God would say to you today. This relationship's not dead. This person is not hopeless in my eyes that when Jesus comes into that person's life, when Jesus does something in that situation, it is asleep. It's not dead. It's going to come alive again. Not just by hoping. Not just by faith in faith self. It's actually through the presence of Jesus in a person's life. Jesus says she is not dead. She is just sleeping. Come on. Let's believe that over our relationships. Let's let faith rise in our hearts. See, when, it, when Jesus comes into a situation, nothing is impossible. Something that seemed dead, buried and forgotten all of a sudden seems to have a way forward. God doesn't operate against human will. We can talk about broken relationship. We can talk about marriages. We can talk about... You know, Pastor Bill shared this a couple of weeks ago that it's not about God circumventing or um, imposing himself against people's will. That's not what God does and it's not what he can do. But when, when Jesus softens a human heart, we know that miracles can happen and that people's lives can be turned around. And we see that she's not dead, she is sleeping. And in verse 31, 41, he took her by the hand and said to her, little girl, I tell you, get up. She got up at once and started walking around. And when this happened, they were completely amazed. I wonder if you would just believe upon Jesus, that when Jesus is in the room, when Jesus is present, when Jesus comes in, when a prayer is answered, anything is possible 
that God can restore even the most broken relationship. God wants to tell somebody today that your marriage is not dead. It's sleeping. There's things that need to be worked on. There's some significant things that need to be moved and repaired and restored, but it's not dead, it's sleeping. Your relationship with your kids isn't finished. You might not have... It might be in a difficult situation. They might not want to talk to you. But when Jesus is involved, there is still hope. So you keep praying. You keep believing that for something to be repaired and reconnected in that relationship. Don't give up. Don't give up. Love never gives up. God wants to bring some relationships back to life today. Parents, just quickly as a close, I want to encourage you about bringing things alive again and restored again and to keep watering those relationships you know we all make mistakes as parents we all have things that we would do differently next time but don't hold on to those regrets and those shames of the past you know today is the day you can you can start doing some things with your family today and start afresh apologize if there's things that you wish you had done differently verbalize it apologize and then do something different to show that you want it to be different with your family children Forgive your parents. They're not perfect. Give them grace. Be patient with them. You know, maybe God's wanting to challenge you today about how you're relating to your family, your siblings. Forgive them. You know, the Bible says this. One of the commands, it's not a a suggestion, it's a command. He says, children, obey your parents. Obey your parents. One One way that you can restore and rebuild a relationship with your family is by obeying your parents. Maybe you need to do that today. Dads, maybe you you can't change what's happened in the past in terms of not being present in your your family's life, but you can start today. You can start today by being present, by saying "Um, things are going to be different. I want it to be different. Husbands and wives, regardless of where your spouse is at, practice humility, forgiveness, self-sacrificial love. And I guarantee that when you lay that down, something will happen. I can't guarantee that it'll, everything will be better overnight, but I tell you that when, when husbands or wives practice self-giving love, the other person will notice that something has changed in your life and it will soften their heart, I'm sure. I want to finish with this story about how God can breathe new life into relationships. I want to share a story about a friend of mine who not long ago, his marriage relationship was on the rocks and to the point where his wife... People in her life were saying, this marriage is over. It's, I don't know what's happening here. You need to, you need to end this relationship with this, with this guy, my friend. He had mentally checked out. If we relate it to the plant analogy, the plant was so wilted, he was not doing anything to help, the, help that plant at all. Neglected it. You know, he was... He was having stuck in his own issues. He was a slob around the house. He had multiple substance addictions. He was unpleasant to be around, negative and depressed. I mean, this is a, a tricky situation. The wife was in despair, crying all the time. To be honest, she was going through a living hell. In all, for someone looking in, their marriage was dead. But through it all, she kept praying for him. And other people were praying for their marriage every day. But nothing changed. It was a hopeless, hopeless situation. But here's the thing. Their marriage wasn't dead. It was just sleeping. Jesus was on the move. Because then out of nowhere, and it seemed like everyone had given up on it and it was a fait accompli, One day, my mate experienced a small answer to prayer. It was a small sign of life that was not dead. My friend talked to his wife, talked to us, and he said, you know, I want to get help. I'm serious. I'm going to check myself into a a rehab, 12-month rehab program. I I want things to change. And from where he was, that was a miracle, that he would have the insight, where he would have the desire to actually do something, and not give up. You know, and he 
came out of that program, did the full 12 months, which is, again, an answer to prayer. And little by little, when we saw him over the time, he was changing. Jesus was breathing new life into him. He, was, he began owning, owning up to what he had been doing or what he wasn't doing, how he'd been hurting others, and started to show a real commitment towards changing and turning his life around with God's help. He started talking about the difference that Jesus was making in his life. Their, their marriage wasn't dead, it was just sleeping. And after 12 months in rehab, he came out a renewed man. And month by month since then, they have been rebuilding one block at a time, restoring their marriage. And again, it's not to say that it, a click of the fingers, magic wand, it's all done. No, there's some hard work ahead. And that, but they, with Jesus, took something that was completely dead, completely gone. It was, on, it was going nowhere and that it's turned around through the presence of Jesus. And that even the most impossible situations, Jesus wants to turn around. Why don't we stand to our feet? I want to encourage you today that when things look hopeless, God is working. When things look impossible, Jesus is on the job. That God is in the business of bringing dead things to life. Don't give up. God never gives up. He hasn't given up on you. He hasn't given up on your friend. He hasn't given up on your relationship. He hasn't given up on your kids. He hears your prayers. He wants to bring dead things to life. We need Jesus in our relationships. We need Jesus in our hearts. And we need Jesus to make the difference. I wondered today, what relationship is, is God highlighting to you? you? Think, man, that I need Jesus to come into that relationship. I need, I need, there needs to be a change. It's been neglected, it's been ignored, it's disconnected, it's in trouble. Today, let's call out to Jesus and say, God, help me to start self-giving love and, and reaching out, taking action, not just words, but taking actions to rebuild, repair with God's help. Whether we see no signs of change, that God, would you help me to, to water that? I'm going to pray for you in a second and believe that, that a relationship is going to be changed today because of God's input in your life. But before we close, maybe, so here's the thing about the gospel. Here's the thing about our Jesus is that the Bible says that we are dead in our sins, that all have sinned and fallen short, that like sheep you have gone astray, that we have ignored, rebelled and actively rejected the presence of God, His Lordship, His rescue ship in our life. That if our relationship with God was like a plant, then we've walked away from it and it's wilted and it's dead. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 that it's gone. It's dead. But here's the thing that with the gospel was that it wasn't what we did. It wasn't what we could have done because that's what we did. But God gave His life through Jesus, sending Jesus to die on the cross, that He was the seed that fell, that died, that so we could have new life and that He gave your life. He gave His life for us so that we could admit what we did. We could admit our sin and rebellion and that we could say thank you for this gift of salvation, this gift of restored relationship. God, I don't wanna be out of a relationship with you anymore. I want new life in you. I want a relationship with you and we can have it through Jesus. So with every head bow, with every eye closed, if that's you today, if you've strayed or if you didn't know about God and then He wants to be with you. He wants you to acknowledge where you're at with Him, that you're morally and spiritually bankrupt without Jesus' sacrifice. And today all we need to do is surrender your life to Him. Acknowledge Him as your rescuer, 
your Saviour, your Forgiver. And to say, God, today I give you my life. It's the, if that's you today, I just want you to put up your hand. I'm not going to do too much more talking. I just want you to put up your hand and, I, and just say, I want a restored relationship with God the Father, my Creator. A restored relationship. For the first time or the first time in a long time, God, I acknowledge my need for you. You just raise your hand as an acknowledgement and say, God, yes, I'm sorry, Lord. Awesome. Just keep your hand up. No one's looking around. Anyone else? Yeah, so good. So good. Yeah, a couple of people. Three people. I want to pray for you. In fact, let's all pray this together. Let's all pray this together out loud, all together. God, thank You. Come on, all together. God, thank You. That although we let You down, although we walked astray, You gave Your life for us. You forgave us. You didn't give up on us. You called us to Yourself. Thank You for Jesus. Lord, thank You that I'm restored through Christ. Reborn and renewed. Made whole. The old has gone, the new has come. In Jesus' Name. In Jesus' Name. In Jesus' Name. We're going to sing this song about Jesus making all things new. I want to encourage you if If you have a relationship that needs to be made new, then I want you to just raise your hand where you are. Raise your hand to heaven. Say, that's me. We're going to sing this song. We're just going to declare that Jesus is going to do something in our relationships. Jesus is going to do something in our life. Come on, if that's you today in this relationship series and you're saying, Jesus, I want you to do something new in me. I need your self-sacrificial love. I need need you to breathe life in my family. I need you to breathe life in my relationship. Come on, reach out to Him. Believe upon Him today. Let's sing.